It's really nice to be back with Caroline again. Hello. Hello. We've been doing some teaching together, so we thought we'd take this opportunity to look at some more timbre um, embroidery and timbre hooks. Um, do you just want to have a recap about what timbre is, if people don't know? Yeah, so timbre is an embroidery of chain stitches made with a little tiny sharp hook. And I have an example here of my own work. So here you've got paisley shapes with four mil pearl beads on them. There are some sequins scaled. There's some metal thread in wiggly shapes with little tiny seed beads on there. And there's some braid effect where you mix the two. So there's a contrast here of some surface stitching just for the stitch and application of beads as well. Okay, so we've actually got some timbre hooks in stock in our shop now. Look like this. So what we thought we'd do is Caroline's going to show us um, how to set our timbre hooks up. So I'll just show you what's inside so you can take the little lid off. It's got a bit of padding in the top. You might want to keep that bit of padding. If you just shake it, it will come out. And we have the handle. And we've actually got three needles in this set. We've got a large one, a medium one and a small one. Karen's going to talk about that a little bit more. And they've got packets to keep those in, so hang on to the packets. And just keep the stopper as well, because you can actually keep it in this tube um, with the hook installed into the handle and it fits in the tube. And this will just help to protect the top of the needle. So keep hold of that as well. So Karen's going to show us how to install our needle and then how to choose the right needle for the right job. So... Here we have what's in that packaging. We've got the timbre holder and we've got three hooks. We've got a medium one, a thick one and a fine one. Here's the wooden holder with a brass end and the little screw there, which is what's going to hold the hook in place, a little knurled screw. I'm going to take the middle sized one here and install it into the hook. Now, which way the hook is pointing in the holder is really important. That's what's going to help you know which way it's pointing so you can get it out of the fabric when you're working. So pushing that in to the end of the holder, I'm just going to make sure the screw is undone enough to slide that down. There we go. Now I need it to point upwards where the screw is. The hook needs to be lined up with the centre of this screw. So I'm using the light, catching the end of the hook, and I'm pressing back with my index finger just to hold that in place. Sometimes when you tighten the screw, it will turn to one side. So tightening that up, and then I'm just rotating it now to check that it's lined up. I think I need to readjust a little bit to the left. Worth taking the time to get this in securely and accurately lined up. Okay, that's good. So now I'm happy with that. So three different sizes of hook. Which one to use? This middle size is great for your standard sewing cotton, which is what you'll use for putting on your beads, your sequins your little bugle bees, your seed bees. This is the workhorse thread of tambouring. Lots of different brands you can use here. And this is going to fit within your hook. Great for that, for the medium sized hook. We've got a finer one there, a uh, finer hook available. And with that, we've got two sorts of metal thread here. This is an Indian tambouring thread quite stiff and fine and we have a Gutterman machine embroidery metallic thread. This is a little bit finer than the Indian thread. Try them out with your medium sized hook but you could use the finer one and that's going to make less of a mark in your fabric. And we've got an example here of a piece of work that involves a lot of metal thread. So you might have seen this one on Pinterest, it's popular. We've got a uh, Perlay thread number 12 there for which you need a larger hook. 
We've got scaled sequins, we have bees which were threaded onto an ordinary sewing thread and you might see there this vermicelli background, that's the metal machine embroidery thread there. And if you have some Indian tambourine thread and I think Sarah's got some available in the shop, try that out too. It's very shiny, it has quite a different sort of feel. Now the perle thread, or you could use a thicker thread such as this, Madeira Lana. This is a woolen thread designed for machine embroidery. It's soft, it's got a slight halo to it. If you use too fine a hook with this, you'll split the thread. So you want to use the larger size with that. And here we have an example of what you can do with the Lana. So here I've worked it from the top. The chain stitch is the decorative side here. Soft thread and you can see the textured effect that it gives you with this zigzag tamper stitch here. So gauge the size of your hook according to the size of the thread. Use the middle one to start with and then as you start to experiment with more varied threads try out some of the different hook sizes. Okay, thank you. If you've got any questions about um, installing your hook, if you have any trouble or not quite sure if something's not right, do drop us um, a comment below and we will help you out with that. Don't forget you can put it back in your um, tube to store it to keep it safe. You don't want to bend the hook on it. If you haven't seen um, any of Caroline's Tambor videos, they're fabulous. Pop over and have a look and she um, teaches you step by step through how to start, how to put beads and sequins on. Um, we've got loads of it on there for you, so do stop and check that out. And we'll put a link to the Tambor hook and some of the threads that we've shown here we've got in the shop as well, so we'll put a link in the description to, uh, below. Pop along to the shop and have a look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>